all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone garden and today we have cleaned off the front porch and we are ready to plant a, up a bunch of beautiful shade plants and decorate the porch for the spring. So I kind of update my porch with each season. I change out plants, sometimes I do real plants, sometimes I do faux plants. I love to decorate, especially for Halloween. That's one of my favorite times of the year to decorate. But now it is time for the spring. Every year I learn more and more about my porch. I do know that my porch really does better with plants that are in deep shade. So we're gonna be focusing on that today. And then I also know I do better with my porch when I do a nice cleaning of everything prior to starting to decorate. I wipe down my doors, my windows, my mirrors. I use the blower to blow off all the um, concrete, just whatever I need to do to give it a nice fresh update. So even if you're on a tight budget, you can't do much on your porch, bring everything out, spend some time just cleaning up the space and you'll be shocked at what a difference it makes. Okay, for those of you who are new, let's take a little tour. So this goes to my front door. Um, I have an antique mirror here and I got this guy off of Facebook Marketplace a couple of, maybe a year ago. I think it was a year ago last spring and painted it and have it out here and I use it for decor couple of containers. Um, I used to have all my containers set up to drip, but I have a really low spot right here. So I was like flooding the space with water with the drip. It would not drain from here out. So I do hand water all of these now. And then I have this portion of the porch, which is where I typically have my little bistro chair and table and where I like to hang out with my husband. I have an additional mirror here. I love having mirrors outside. I think it's super fun. That one was purchased for 20 bucks from a neighbor and got an antique column. This is a fun planter. It has some, um, oh, what were these called? Star of Bethlehem. That's it. <laughs> it's some Star of Bethlehem bulbs in there. A couple of more containers, but I got all the place cleared out. Now we have a lot of wind right now, so everything's just blowing back in, but we're going to go ahead and start by filling our containers with beautiful shade plants. Okay, we're gonna start by working with this particular container back here that has the Star of Bethlehem bulbs that I really hope come back. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I love them so much, they were so unique. I'll see if I can find some footage and hopefully put that up. So the bulbs are down, I believe it's about six inches, so I don't really wanna mess with them too much. Get my gloves on, I'm trying to wear my gloves more, y'all because my hands are so dry, I keep getting like little cracks and stuff in them. And yet I'm terrible about um, putting on hand lotion. I know, if I would just put on hand lotion, it would make all the difference, but I haven't done it. <laughs> okay, so basically the idea is I've got the bulbs in here and I need something that's shade loving, low growing to allow the bulbs to come up. So I um, got this ajuga. Let me go ahead and add a little bit of plant tone. We're gonna recharge my soil, which is really important in containers. If you're not gonna change out the soil, make sure you add fertilizer or compost or something to it. So I've got this ajuga. It's called Reptans or Burgundy Glow, excuse me. Burgundy Glow, also known as Bugleweed. Um, this perennial in my area loves sun to shade. Uh, light watering, let's see, grows about three to six inches tall by 18 to 36 inches wide and is hardy in zones 3A to 9B, so burgundy glow. So I bought this container with the idea that would actually end up dividing it. So I'm going to kind of come in here a little bit, I'm going to use my hands to start off with, and see if I can spread out this plant into smaller plants that would be easier to plant around the rim of this container. So I'm literally just, you wanna start with moist soil coming across and pulling it across like that. So there's one part. Let's see if we can break this down even more. So really gotta take the time to look and see if there's actually a place to divide it. I think there is, let's see. Oh, 
perfect. So I'm going to take these smaller pieces and I'm going to tuck them right into this soil with the hopes that next year I won't have to put a plant in here, that this will come back and I'll have my bulbs in there. It'll be nice and happy and everything will be good. And it's just one less planter that I need to spend money on. So what I'll do next year is I'll just come back. I'll spend the time um, fertilizing it, pruning it, making sure it's good to go, and then starting it from there for the spring. All right, so another piece. So I'm going to end up just taking this. So just one of these containers, I think it was $10 for the ajuga. Let me look at the price. Yeah, $9.95. I got it at um, Homegrown. And I took that one bigger container and divided it into smaller containers. Now you can do this in your garden. Like I could have just gone ahead and planted all this in my garden, Let's turn this into four plants, which we all know the cost of plants is pretty intense right now. So um, being able to, you know, take one plant, divide it into four, it's gonna be helpful for a lot of budgets. All right. I think that looks amazing. So let me brush off a little bit. We'll put it back in its place up here. And I'll put this top back on it. And there, the leaves are going to kind of have to work their way through here. But it, they'll do that with good time and time. And as these continue to grow and put on growth, these leaves will start coming through all of the different holes of the container. And then I do have this set up to drip. So I make sure I tuck my drip back in here. There we go. Looks good. On to the next one. Okay. So one thing I learned last year is I really loved having um, begonias on my porch. So I've got quite a few that I'm going to be working with today. We'll go ahead and start with this container and we're going to start with this nice, big, gorgeous begonia also from homegrown. All the plants that I'm using today are from homegrown or I grew myself. So go ahead and take the container out or the plant out of the container and then I can backfill to make it easier to get in here to move some of the soil into the nursery pot. This isn't as root bound as it looks. All right, and we're gonna start by just nestling that down in there and then we'll come back with the nursery pot. Of course, y'all know I just cleaned all this space and then now I'm making everything a mess. <laughs> Brought this guy in, which I'm really excited. I have two of these. I bought three of these from that big warehouse sale that I did. One of them has a lemon tree in it and it's stinging gorgeous. Maybe I'll bring it up here. We'll see. And then I've got two more of these pots. So I thought if I do one over here and then one closer to the door, it'd be a nice bright pop of color for the spring and for the summer. It'd be great. So this, since this brand new pot, I need to add soil to it. It does have a hole at the base. a big container all right all right and we'll go ahead and charge it with slow release fertilizer I use this one but you can use whatever slow release fertilizer you want okay so I'm gonna plant this as a one direction container I'm gonna plant it like this is the front and that this is the back so taller things in the back shorter things in the front Okay, we're going to start with double up begonias from Prune Winters. I love these begonias. I put them in on this front porch last year and they did brilliantly. This is the double up pink. They love shade. Next year, at the end of this year, I would like to try to overwinter these. Bring these inside or at least take cuttings from them. That'd be pretty awesome. So I've got one that's the pink and I've got one that's the double up white. And these were both from homegrown as well. I am angling them a little bit. 
so that they are spilling over the edge just a touch. Okay, and then I'm gonna be adding coleus that I grew from seed. We're gonna start with this one first, which I took from cuttings from a plant um, last fall. I don't know what variety it is. It's kind of a darker tone and it has some pinks through it. It's very, very pretty. And then I'm also gonna be adding in Kong coleus that I grew from seed. I grew um, the mixed variety, so I don't know what each individual variety is. And then one more of the coleus. This guy is a little wilty. He's a little dry. So we'll get him watered pretty quick. Okay, that's pretty. And the con coleus and the other coleus, they'll grow up a little bit taller and these will definitely fill in a lot. For now though, I am gonna tuck in a couple of small impatience. They're just a pink impatience, just for a little bit of extra color and texture. Tucking one into this corner too. Just for a little bit of extra color. Okay, I've got another little terracotta one right here. And I think in this one, I'm gonna mix some coleus and some impatience. one more to this mix because I've got one, two, three, four. I would like a fifth because I like to work with uneven elements when I'm designing. Okay, I'm gonna add another double up begonia in pink. I'm angling it just a little bit and then I'm coming around the edges of the front, making soil sure soil is tucked down in there, just like that. We're gonna add another concolius. This color variation is to die for, absolutely beautiful. nice lots of color some lightness I like it all right now I'm going to change this planter out right here for one of the blue and white okay running out of soil so I'm going to use some of this mix it with I've already got some compost in there mix my old soil with compost and then of course I'll add fertilizer So the main thing in this large big one is going to be a fuchsia plant, which loves shade. This one is a pink and white. Let's see if I can find the variety in here. It's called City Lights and it's a hanging basket. I quite often buy hanging baskets and then just take them um, apart, which works well. This also is from Homegrown. It was $20, a little pricey. But I don't usually see fuchsia in anything but a hanging basket, so this kind of just was my option here. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so pretty. I'm going to tuck in an additional coleus that I grew from cedar propagation right in that corner there. Now these containers will not be hooked up to drips, so I will have to remember to water them. Okay, and I think a white double up begonia right here in the front will contrast really well. All right, let's turn our sights to this guy. 
it does have an ivy in here which was showing signs of life again which I was just shocked so I'm just gonna cut it off and let it start fresh and for this guy I tuck in some more concolias they're getting the theme right it's gonna work really well because I'm repeating so many awesome elements too much bending over today <laughs> okay so we got all the planters planted up for the patio however it is now later than the day than I was hoping and I am leaving for Virginia to see my sweet nephew um, compete in a gymnastics tournament so I'm gonna go out there and do that enjoy them for a few days so I'm not gonna be back on this porch for about four to five days. So it'll be really interesting to see how these containers do in the meantime. So I'm gonna actually wait to show you all what they look like at that point in the time, whether it's a success or a failure. A lot of times we just see the planter like when it first gets planted and like that's it. So let's see what it looks like in a few days. And at uh, that, that point in time, we'll also decorate the front porch. Okay, so it's actually ended up being like a week later. I ended up leaving on a trip to Fort Virginia and came back and we had all of this <laughs> all the things happen I'm actually behind on videos There's just a lot of stuff going on at the house and with my kiddos and my husband and we are just really really busy but in that meantime look all of the beautiful Virginia creeper has all leafed out absolutely beautiful but let me show you what these shade containers now look like and then we'll start adding the decorations for this front porch okay so we've had a ton of rainstorms so I have a little bit of water left over from that but check out how beautifully these have filled in in a week. All the impatience has started blooming. Look at the fuchsia. So pretty. And I love it in the blue and white pots. So gorgeous. Over here we have the coleus and the coleus are going to be a little bit darker because they don't have as much sun. When they're in the sun, they'll be a little bit more vibrant on the color begonia over there looks like this begonia I'm gonna have to deadhead it not ideal but you know so pretty and then over here this grouping is just lovely I love the deep saturated colors They're just looking really nice. And you can see all the ajuga has really fluffed up over here. It's looking really good. Okay, let's start with this little table area. And this year I'm really focusing on a lot of pastels, a lot of pinks, very soft, soft pastel spring colors. So I got these um, cushions, they were on clearance. I got them for $15 each at Home Goods. I'm going to remove these tags. And I really liked like the soft pastel colors, just thought were fun. But I also like the hint of terracotta on them, I think is really pretty. So they can go this way or they can go this way. I think I'm going to start them with the light color for now. 
Okay, and then I got a couple of pillow color covers off of Amazon. I really liked the idea of the mixed patterns. It ties back into um, a little whimsical spring bunting that I'm gonna have on the side. Now, I would like to put um, some kind of little nest decoration right here, but I've been waiting for when I'm gonna um, trim the willow tree and then I'll be able to create it, but this will work for now. Okay, so I got this just really inexpensive paper bunting from Amazon and I really liked it because all the bunting is like a different pattern. Now, I did think that this was fabric um, and it is not fabric. <laughs> It definitely came in uh, paper, but that's fine. I mean, then I don't have to stress if it gets ruined, it, it gets ruined, it's no big deal. So I think I'm gonna have that go across here just for some nice added color. I actually have enough for two. I might go one and then two for a lower one. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna use a dot of hot glue to secure this to the um, brick. I feel that that's the easiest and it's really easy to remove at a later point in time. So I just put a little dot of hot glue right here and then I just come through and hold it in place on one end and then I'll do the same on the other end. One thing about the using the hot glue is you definitely need to make sure that it is cooled and dry before you let go. I've got like this kind of terracotta urn and the terracotta ties in real nicely with the terracotta edging on those cushions on the side. Then I've got some faux cherry blossoms because it is spring after all. I just got back from Virginia so got to see lots of cherry blossoms in that area. And I also spend a lot of time collecting like prints from thrift stores and stuff. And this is an original with a really great spring theme. It's like a little um, kettle with a handle and lots of spring flowers. And it's signed, it's a print down here by Bertrand. I really do need to Google it. I just want to do, I want to mix, move these, let's switch. Yeah, I like that better. I really like having artwork outside. The idea of this space is to make it feel more bringing the indoors outside, outdoors inside, the mashing of the two. So I really like having artwork. Okay, and I always like to have a third object. I always like to have like either three, five, seven. So there's only two. So I wanna come in with a third object and I'm just using this old jadeite bowl I got years ago, some vintage something. And then I'm topping in or tossing in some of these faux little robin eggs. Now I know that Easter has passed, but still, this makes me think of spring. Just like that, keeping it nice and simple. It's still room for our mail people to drop packages. I think that looks nice. Okay, because I have more bunting and I don't have like a wreath, sometimes I like to put a wreath here. I don't have a wreath at this point in time. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of the bunting here as well, um, just to kind of fill in this space too. The bunting actually came in a set of five, not three. So I might put two pieces on here, just really fill in the space. Okay, so I have lots of vintage linens I've collected over the years. 
a lot of these are family pieces, but I thought this might be really pretty. It's a little bit of pink. Okay, and then we'll put a little bit more of the moss and nestle. A little bit more of the eggs there. And then come over the top with the glass. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, and to tie in the vintage linens, I am going to add some doilies right underneath these containers because you would do this anyway at that time at that era to protect your furniture okay and for this old bench i have an antique quilt that belonged to my grandmother And unfortunately, like when I found this at my grandmother's house, it was, had been up in the attic for years and years. And so um, it was not in the best condition. So I don't mind putting it out here. My grandmother was also a smoker. So it has a, faint, a very faint smoky smell. So when I'm using it, I only use it outside anyway. I don't store it in my home. I wonder if I could. Do this at a diagonal. Okay, and then lastly, I have the pink rug. Let's see how this works. And this should flatten over time. But with the way the rain is, I'm going to pull it this way a little bit to keep it from interacting with that water down there. I'm into it. I still need to do this hanging basket. Just wasn't in the budget for right now. So we'll do that with shade plants at a later time. Look how sweet that area is. And then I still have a couple more spaces if I wanted to move this or add a plant there and add a plant there at some point in time. I think it would be really fun as well. I like how it's, you really have to look because there's a lot of different elements.
really happy with how it turned out. I love the vintage quality. I love that there are so many elements that were already that I already owned were in my home and then bringing them outside. That works fine because my porch is covered. I don't really deal with a lot of water out here, which is nice. The only is if there's a big storm, the front part of the front porch might flood a little bit, but it's not really that big of an issue. So I don't mind putting a lot of these elements, and I'm very much of the mind that um, like I have lots of heirloom pieces, lots of pieces from family, lots of the antique and vintage pieces that I've collected. I'm very of the mind that they should be used. I'm not um, someone who just tucks them away and then we never they never see the daylight. I use things. And um, I think that works good. I, then my, my children have memories of those things because a lot of things that I have, I have some memories of them, but most of them have no memories of them because they were just put away like that antique quilt. Um, and my grandmother just had like a stack, a big box of them up in the attic um, that were from her grandmother. And so you're kind of like, was it her grandmother or her mother? I can't recall. Well, that's even the deal. Like I don't even know the stories behind um, those quilts because they were just tucked away and not used and not brought out. So I'm very much of the mind that I like to do that. I like to bring everything out and use it within my home. And then of course I like to bring indoor elements outside and vice versa. So bring some glass pieces out works really well and then tying it in with the moss, you know, so that you have a natural element with it works good. And then all these kind of soft pastel colors really all came together beautifully. It has a very vintage styling, which I think is super fun. I've never gone this feminine and vintage on my styling, but I'm, re I'm really into it. I think it's really pretty. But I hope you all enjoyed today's video and hope you all are getting to the point where you can start adding some spring elements out onto your porch. I did not do a um, wreath yet because I'm waiting to trim my willow tree and then I'm going to use my willow branches to make a wreath for my front door. So that'll probably be a later project. But hopefully you all are at least getting, you know, a spring wreath out, getting excited about the season. And if you are lucky enough to have a front or a back porch, this is my first porch ever. My husband and I have lived in lots of houses. We did a lot of buying and selling um, when we were much younger. Uh, we would just basically flip the houses within two years and then pay down our mortgage, which was great. And um, so I've lived in a lot of different houses and this is my first house with a porch and I absolutely love it. I spend a lot of time here talking to you all, writing in my garden journal, having a drink at the end of the day with my husband. I love it, absolutely love it. So if you have a front porch, back porch, I hope you get some peace out there during this springtime season. All right, you all, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment, it helps grow my channel so much. And be sure to check me out on my social media outlets, including FaceTime, oh, FaceTime, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.